loving so wildly from their hearts out. Others have been then in hospital, and institution, service work because we first heard the message of NAEHA or hospital. Whatever form of service we choose to be involved in, we do so with our primary purpose of carrying the message in mind. Now we must ask ourselves, just what is the message we are trying to carry? Is it that we never got to be struck again? Is it that recovery, this is the life candidates for jobs, institutions, and then early death? Is it the hope that an addict? Any ending can recover from the pieces of addiction. Well, it's all of this and more. The message we carry is that by practicing the principles contained within the 12 steps, we have had a spiritual awakening. Whatever that means for each one of us is the message we carry through the seeking recovery. The ways in which we carry the message are as varied as our members. There are, however, some basic guidelines that we, as a fellowship, have found to be helpful. First and foremost, we share our experience, strength, and hope. This means that we share our experience, not the theories we have heard from other sources. This also means that we share our own experience, not someone else's. It is not our job to tell someone seeking recovery where to work, who to live with, how to raise their children, or anything else outside the realm of our experience with recovery. Someone we are trying to help may have trouble in these areas. We can help us not by managing that person's life, but by sharing our own experience in those areas. The developing a personal staff for carrying the message rests on a simple requirement. We must be ourselves. We each have a special, one of a kind personality that is sure to be an attraction to many. Some of us have a startling sense of humor which may reach someone in the sky. Some of us are especially warm and compassionate, able to reach an eddy has really been the recipient of kindness. Some of us have a remarkable talent for telling the truth in no uncertain terms. To an addict literally dying to hear Some of us are as valuable as a for many service committee while others do better working one on one with a suffering addict. Whatever our own personality we have, we can be assured that when we sincerely try to carry the message, we can reach the addict seeking recovery. Yet there are limits to what we can do to help another addict. We cannot force anyone to stop using. We cannot give someone the results of working with them. Not can we go for them. 
We cannot magically remove someone's loneliness or pain. Not only are we powerless over our own addiction, we are powerless over everyone else's. We can only carry the message. We cannot determine who we receive. It is absolutely none of our business. The sandbox is ready to hear the message of recovery and who is not. Many of us have from such a judgment about an addict's desire for recovery and who she soon have been mistaken. Some people relapse do not necessarily signify a lack of interest in recovery. Nor does the model newcomer demonstrate without a doubt a certainty of making it. It is our purpose and our privilege to share the message of recovery unconditionally with anyone expressing a desire to receive it. The principle of unconditional love is expressed in our attitude. Anyone who reaches out for love is entitled to our compassion, our attention, and our unconditional acceptance. Any addict, regardless of the time, should be able to call out his or her pain in an atmosphere free of judgment. Most of us have found that we are able to feel great empathy for those who suffer from our disease precisely because it is our disease. Our empathy isn't abstract. Nor is our understanding. Instead, it is born in shared experience. We greet each other with the recognition, resolve for the matter of the sentinel in fatal catastrophe. This shared experience, more than anything else, contributes to the atmosphere of unconditional love in our meetings. Helping others is perhaps the highest aspiration of the human heart and something we have been entrusted with as a result of a higher power working in our lives. We would do well to remember to have the thought of our understanding to continue working to us in our efforts to carry the message. Diligently practicing the principle of recovery will ensure that the connection between ourselves and our higher power remains open and that our service to others is firmly rooted in spirituality. Spirituality becomes a way of life for us as we live by the principles of recovery. The temple of my life lives according to this principle is potentially the most powerful message we can carry. We don't need to wait until we learn the second step to practice the principle of open-mindedness. Courage and honesty have a place in our lives even when we are breaking an inventory. Humility is always a desirable state. Whether we are asking the God of our understanding to remove our shortcomings, not be business with a co-worker, or nothing to a friend. What is the principle of recovery in all our efforts is what we stand for. Both in and out of meetings, no matter who is 
our individual recovery depends on meetings that take place regularly. After recovery, addicts who participate and sponsors who share with us how things take place. Even members who can get to meetings depend on the support of fellow addicts. Maintaining contact with phone calls, letters, and non-owner groups. As each individual member relies on the support of the fellowship for survival, so that survival depends on its members. Our first tradition encourages not only our members but our groups to place our common water first. Most groups conduct most of their affairs on their own. In attending to the details of their meeting, we call routines. Anonymous now groups make the set of the bigger picture. In a larger brain, each group is expanding the supporting fabric of narcotics anonymous as a whole. Without that fabric, there would be no now. The importance of our unity encourages our group to look beyond their own little growth to the common needs of the worldwide now. Fellowship, placing the welfare of the home before their own. The relationship described in the first tradition is reciprocal. Groups work together in a spirit of cooperation to ensure the survival of narcotics anonymous. In turn, those groups receive strength and support from every other group and all our services. The strength of our mutual commitment to not create the unity that finds us not either in spite of all that might divide us. The common welfare of not the tents of the continued growth and well-being of the fellowship in every corner of the world. Our shared commitment to recovery and to our common welfare gives us a personal state in the unity of now. In meetings, we find a new place to belong friends, and a thought for a better life. A feeling of fear and concern put between us and the group. We learn to treat others with kindness and respect and to walk with them to support each other and our group. Sometimes we comfort each other merely by being present. Other times, they phone call or letter simply to say hello can make a lot of difference. Our relationships with other addicts are a subsequent in our personal recovery. We come to rely on meetings and on each other for that support. The unity we see in our meetings is an expression not only of our reliance on each other but our mutual reliance on spiritual principles and a higher power. Now unity begins with our recognition of the therapeutic value of one adding to another. We help each other in different ways. Sometimes we help each other one on one, as in sponsorship. Who should see? Or we may help each other by participating in the formation of new meetings to make now accessible to more addicts. 
computer networking just for ourselves, but for associates who pay us. The Unity Fix supports our common welfare is created not only by working together but by playing together. The friendships we develop are sanity, strength and not unity. Fellowship activities provide opportunities for us to relax, socialize with each other, and have fun. Conventions, dinners, and holiday celebrations give us a chance to celebrate our recovery while practicing social skills. Picnics, dances, and sports days go look simple. Often allow our families to participate. We strengthen our sense of community when we share more than just meeting time. Stronger relationships develop as we become more involved in each other's lives. The care and understanding for love, these relationships are strengthened in the fabric of naivety. Applying spiritual principles, to Shiba, in the 12th step of NA, we learn to apply principles to better our lives. Formed by the miracle of personal recovery, we reach out to share that miracle with others. This is the essence of being of service in now. In supporting our unity, we first apply principles to guide our own behavior. Astros, we use the same principles for guidance. Let guidance engender a sense of unity that strengthens our ability to reach out to others, enhancing our common welfare. Some of the principles that seem particularly important to unity include surrender and acceptance, commitment, selflessness, love, and anonymity. As we practice these principles, we will find others that strengthen unity as well. Surrender and acceptance open the door to unity. As our trust in a higher power grows, it gets easier to let go of our personal desires and stop fighting for what we want. With an attitude of surrender, working together in a group becomes easier. Tradition 1 presents a picture of addicts working together worldwide to support each other's recovery. We try to remember this goal in all our actions, as individuals or as groups. If we find that our personal desires or the aims of our group conflict with that I think unity asks us to surrender our own desires and accept guidance that enhances the greater good of narcotics anonymous. Only by deciding to be part of that whole plan we support the unity so essential to our personal survival. Commitment is another essential ingredient in unity. Personal commitment to our shared sense of purpose is one of the ties that bind us together. When we know that we belong in NA, and when we make a commitment to stay, we become a part of the greater whole.
Our sense of belonging is closely related to our degree of commitment to recovery now. As a group, the combined